I'm here with Neil Bubbles McMara, who is the maker of the upcoming board game, Dude, Where's My Princess? Upcoming, I like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's coming up. Crazy? Yeah, we were just playing it just now. It was a fun game. Uh, it was interesting. Um, it's kind of a, an exploration game as well as a screw each other over and item finding game. What can I say? The bunch can be had to come up and develop it. <laughs> but I just had to push a little tiny aspect of fuckery in there. So, obviously Munchkin was a, was an influence on this game. Yeah. <laughs> Were there any other games that you'd say influenced it? Uh, Betrayal. 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 Okay. Hill. Okay. For like the Betrayal based system. They just work like that. Mm. And like, it all started with the actual, uh, the regular deck of playing cards, believe it or not. I think a lot of, go uh, a lot of games that get developed start that way. Probably. So, what made you settle on like a, a wooing the princess kind of setting for your game? Uh, probably falls back to the regular deck of cards because I had an idea and I kind of based the idea around the queen. Yeah. And then uh, as the idea developed into more detailed cards, I uh, decided to make it a princess. Yeah. So that there was that little aspect of uh, you know marrying to get into the royalty, and, like that's always with a princess. Like a queen is typically already married, right? Yeah. So one thing I found really interesting about the game is that not only do the dead players still get to play, but they have a whole different style of play than the live players. What made you think of that? That's actually a more recent mechanic I added because. In playtests beforehand, you'd have people who die like right off because of an unfortunate tall pick and they end up on a pitbull trap like turn one, you know? And they'll just have to wait there until someone's yeah. nice enough to res them. So I thought it'd be good to try to come up with a system that encouraged living <laughs> players to bring the dead back. So to, to, to stop them fucking with everyone else. Exactly. Because I have found in a lot of games that when you die, you're just stuck for ages doing nothing. It gets very boring for the dead players. Exactly what go. The game is still in development. You're still coming up with new rules, new ideas. Yeah. How long do you think it will be before you're... Because you're planning on launching a Kickstarter to really produce the game. Yeah. So how long do you think it will be before you think the game's ready for that? Like. In relation to the game itself, I feel it's more or less completed. Like, sure, okay. it could use some, uh, you know, shining on, you know, just a few tweaks to give it that like proper finished product. I think, but I think I have more or less all the bases covered. Like, I've done enough fucking play tests to try and share <laughs> that. So. Uh, in relation to the game itself, I think it's more or less good to go. It's just the actual proper Kickstarter side of yeah. the Kickstarter. You know, knowing how to fulfill orders, you know, distribution, production. The, the, the business end. Yeah, the business end. So I was hoping I could find a game company to pair up with. Yeah. Who like, would like to, you know, make money off of my game essentially while I get my name out there and hopefully get a nice paycheck while I'm at it. Oh, hey, if any game companies watch this, which I doubt is gonna happen. <laughs> um, Thanks! No, I'm not belittling. I'm not. Bel what? What's the word? Bel I've forgotten a word. No, not belittling. Bel maligning. Why did I think maligning began with a B? I'm not maligning you, I'm maligning my channel. Well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm not even supposed to be talking right now, but. This is true, you're on a vow of silence for the year. More like a vow of quiet, because <laughs> it's specifically spoken word. A vow of non-verbalism. Yeah, verbalism, not verbalism, people. <laughs> what were the challenges you came up, you, you met uh, in developing the game, in developing the play? Uh, well, I personally found a challenge to make sure I keep getting new players so I have fresh mm. eyes to look and critique the game. Yeah. And so I can, you know, 
find the shit people don't like, get out, get it out of the game, or at least fix it so that it was terrible. So, what you found hard wasn't so much the coming up with ideas as it was finding people to help you identify which of the ideas were bad. Pretty much. Although, for the most part, the ideas were really good. They just need tweaking to be more functional. Yeah. Uh, which they did. <laughs> uh, yeah. In relation to building, making mechanics from the start, yeah. uh, everything just kind of fell into place. I just had good source of inspiration with every step I made. Like, the previous step would help out figure out the next step and help yeah. over. It's a very uh, kind of um, a linear progression. Like, <laughs> everything is. Well, maybe a, a wavy line, <laughs> as opposed to straight, but yeah, it was relatively straightforward. It's in the right general direction the whole time. I think most of us are a wavy line as opposed to straight. Uh, we're getting into philosophy now, aren't we? <laughs> Why are we here? I'm asking. Well, a long time ago, come to the door. And then the universe was born! <laughs> I'm gonna ask my parents some uncomfortable questions when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Okay. I think that concludes this interview. If you guys have any questions you want to ask about the game, um, Neil, where should they go? Right. I have a Facebook page, um, which is for the sort of company name I'm trying to work the game under, uh, which is Disheveled Tabletop Games on Facebook. There will be a link to that like in the cards or in the actually no they'll be in the cards and in the description anytime i point to the description i automatically point at my dick my dick is not the description it's not if you read my dick it will not tell you about this video i feel like i'm gonna edit in an, an uncomfortable close-up